Hi guys, Andrea Mills here. Today I wanted to make a recommendation to you guys um, for this book called How to Raise a Healthy Child in Spite of Your Doctor. I just bought this book for a friend of mine who's having a baby shower this weekend. It's her first baby and um, it was a really valuable book to me and I wanted to share it with her and then I thought, you know what, I should recommend it to all you guys too. When I first became a mom, I took my son Thomas, who's 14 now, to the doctor whenever he got sick and that's just what I thought you did. That's what you do. You go to the doctor when you're sick. So uh, after a couple of times of taking him because I thought he had something like an ear infection, they started talking about putting tubes in his ears and I'm like, whoa, you know, I don't think he's <laughs> that bad yet. But they're like, well, he keeps having these ear infections and so, you know, we need to do something about it. And the thing is, is that I don't think he ever really had ear infections. Now I realize that because the first time I ever took him in, he had really waxy ears. Like it was kind of oozing out a little bit. And the doctor told me that that was because he had a high fever and it was actually melting the wax and it was coming out of his ears. And that was a sign that he was having an ear infection. So whenever I saw that, I would think, oh, he's sick again, we need to do something. It turns out we are just waxy people. All of my kids have very waxy ears. They're not sick. It's nothing to do with an ear infection. But that was the sign that kept prompting me to go into the doctor and then they were starting to recommend you know surgical intervention when I thought this doesn't this doesn't fit with what I am experiencing so that was the first time that I was like maybe I need to rethink um, how I'm operating here and the second time was when my son Asher he's 12 when he was born when he was two months old he got sick and it happened like on a Friday, he came down with whatever he had. And then over the weekend, he didn't really want to nurse very much. And I could tell he didn't feel good. So Monday morning, I called our clinic. We live in a small town, so nothing's open on the weekend. So I could have, of course, taken him somewhere else further away. But anyways, I didn't feel it was that bad. So I took him in on Monday and the doctor just she really chided me. She had me in tears acting like she just was treating me like, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you rush him to the emergency room? So we did that. We took him to the hospital. Um, he had RSV and a couple of other babies that we knew had also gotten RSV. So we go, we, they admitted him to the hospital and they monitored him overnight and they gave him some breathing treatments. And it was a very long, miserable night. Tom stayed home with Thomas and I stayed at the hospital with Asher. And over the course of that time, I'm observing the machines that are telling me his oxygen levels and all that, which was what they were concerned about was that he wasn't going to be able to get enough oxygen. Um, and so I'm watching this and then the next day, the doctor comes in and decides that we can go home and he prescribes some breathing treatments for us to do at home. and. I realized that his condition had never changed. He was exactly the same when we went home as when we came in. And I remember thinking, if he's healthy enough to go home now, why was he too sick to go home yesterday? That didn't make sense to me. And of course, it was like, I don't know, many thousand dollars for this overnight stay. Um, so that was another, another um, sign to me that, Maybe I shouldn't be as blindly following what they're telling me. Not that they meant harm, because I don't think they did. They didn't mean harm. They're not trying to mislead me or whatever. It's just that I realized that it wasn't a simple matter as what I thought it was. So then we had our third son, and um, I don't recall ever having any incidents with him but at any rate it was somewhere in there that I kind of started looking into more alternative things and then by the time we had our fourth son I that's actually when I found this book and I read it and I'm like oh this this is a lot different than what I had been led to believe so I'm gonna read to you um, uh, a little passage here that I thought was interesting. It, by the way, this book, How to Raise a Healthy Child in Spite of Your Doctor, 
is written by a man who is a pediatrician for 30 years. So it's not like he's just some guy off the street. This is his business. I think he's actually dead now, but when he was alive, this was his business. This was his livelihood. So he's not, um, he knows what he's talking about. Anyways, so let me tell you what he says here on page 23. Under the heading, Key to Health, Stay Away from Doctors. The best way to raise a healthy child is to keep him away from doctors, except for emergency care in the case of an accident or an obviously serious illness. If your child displays symptoms of illness, monitor his condition closely, but don't seek medical help until there are clear indications that he is seriously ill. Most doctors ignore the fact that the human body is a wondrous machine with an astonishing capacity to repair itself. If you take your sick child to a doctor, he probably won't allow it to do that. Instead, he will interfere with the body's natural defenses by giving your child treatment that he doesn't need and shouldn't get with side effects that his body is not designed to handle. So I have taken that concept to heart and I am, I'm certainly not anti-doctor. I'm just anti going every time there's any sort of something going on with my kids. So I have eight children and my four youngest children have never had any sort of a well baby checkup. They've never went to the doctor for an illness. Um, we've had two injuries in the last several years. My son broke his arm and I was very thankful that we had a doctor to go to to help us with that situation. And my daughter had an x-ray once when she suffered a minor injury. So I am not anti-doctor. I am pro going to the doctor when you really need to. And only my first two children, my oldest two, are the only two that have ever been on antibiotics or taken any sort of prescription medicines. Um, my youngest couple of kids, I don't even think have ever had pain reliever. And I'm not anti-medicine either. It's just that I don't find it necessary. And um, even when it comes to things, when they come down with something, I um, I like to do herbal remedies and things like that. But even then, I don't necessarily do anything just because they're sick. Even when they're sick, I watch them and make sure they're eating and drinking. And I just trust that they're going to get better. And they always do. And I'm watching. I'm using my own judgment to assess the situation and um, determine if I really think that this is something that we need to get help with or not. And that that's kind of the crux of this book. It's all about how to develop your own judgment so that you can tell when your child actually needs some help or, you know, is going to be fine. And I think that it's easy to um, put the responsibility on someone else's shoulders. And I, it's profitable for the medical community if we do that. And it's easier for us to do that too, to just everything that happens is take them to the experts to tell us what to do and that's just to me it's not the safest option and I would rather develop my own judgment and be able to tell that we need help or don't need help and so you know the reason my kids have not been to the doctor is not because they've never been sick and it's not because I'm anti-doctor it's just that I have never judged that they needed to and obviously they're all healthy fine children so clearly we are doing fine with this whole system anyway so i just wanted to recommend this book to you guys and if you're interested in developing more of an ability to judge the seriousness of the situation that you find yourself in then i hope that you will consider reading this book and learning we are going to keep talking about raising children about unassisted birth about homeschooling um, any number of other topics so if you have not subscribed, I hope that you will consider doing that so you don't miss out on anything. And if you already have subscribed, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to what I have to say. We will see you guys again very, very soon.